Joining us now on the hotline is one of the great referees currently serving in mixed martial arts and in the history of the sport. The esteemed Herb Dean joins us here. Herb, how are you? I'm good. How about yourself? Doing great. Herb, you're not in Perth, Australia, are you? No, I'm not in Perth. I'm in Pasadena, California. Oh, yeah? What are you refing this weekend? Uh, this weekend, I'm not, I don't have a, I'm not refereeing any fight. Okay. It's very rare. This is, this is like a weekend. I'm just going to hang around my city. I'll probably go to, uh, I think I might go down to Long Beach at the Queen Mary. They're having a, a reggae festival, so I think I might go enjoy that. Okay. Very good. Very good. That would be kind of fun. Uh, okay, man, so I wanted to get you on because someone asked me a question this week, and I did not have an answer for it. And they they asked, you know, how do referees get graded? How do they get evaluated? How do those evaluations impact their career and what assignments they get, what they don't get, when, what happens when you get a good assessment, a bad one? Because we were talking about Mario, and I don't want to make this about Mario, but then I brought up how the NFL grades the referees, and they go through their performance with a fine-toothed comb, and I just wanted to see what we could learn about on the MMA side of things. So let me ask you. Yeah, well, go- I was hoping, you know, I knew you were going to have a hard question, because, yeah, I don't have much answer for that question. You might know more about it than I do. And I don't know about how the NFL does it, and I don't know how, um, how, they, um, how they go through it with the fine-tooth comb, what this fine-tooth comb is, and, and who's the one doing the combing. But uh, mixed martial arts refereeing, I think, officiating, is, is a, I think it's a bit complicated because it's a three-dimensional sport, and every single situation is never the same. So it's, pretty, it's, a, it's a tough one. So let's, let's start here. Uh, how did you get your first refing assignment? My first wrestling assignment, I started off with King of the Cage. So we were on the Indian Reservation uh, back in like around 99. And uh, Larry Landless was my coach. Hmm. And he was a referee for a lot of the fights in the Southern California area. He used to referee for the UFC. He did the uh, Baroni Tanner fight. Oh, I didn't, you remember that one. Yeah, yes, he, he tried Because Baroni tried to punch him in the face. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So that was, that was a bad day for Larry had a lot of other uh, really good performances. He refereed a lot of fights mm-hmm. uh, for the UFC and for uh, the Southern California area. And uh, he was, I mean, he was one, he was probably the next known referee after John McCarthy at the time. So um, when we were on the reservations, I would help him out. I would, uh, he went and uh, I would do the job of an inspector. I would, uh, I would supervise the guys inspecting in the back, uh, in the, in the corners. And uh, one thing led to another, and uh, I started to referee for uh, King of the Cage. And so that's how I first started. So by the time I got a, an assignment from an athletic commission, I had, had a little bit of experience. Uh, I, I first, uh, King of the Cage got, decided to start throwing events in Reno. And so I got licensed with Nevada, and they started using me uh, besides the King of the Cage. They started using me at some of their other shows around Nevada. Uh, there's a couple of shows that would happen in Vegas that weren't the UFC, uh, and I would get to referee those. How long before you were able to referee, uh, how many bouts would you say you refereed before you got one in, let's say, Strike Force or UFC? I, I don't remember how many bouts, but uh, I had refereed, by the time I was refereeing the UFC, I think I probably had refereed more than any uh, referee I know hmm. uh, because I refereed uh, uh, King of the Cage and Gladiator Challenge and WEC and anything else, one-offs, a bunch, you know, Cobra Challenge, uh, stuff that was happening in Vegas. So I was very busy. I drove all over uh, the Southwest region uh, refereeing fights, uh, often volunteering my time. So uh, by the time I had uh, started refereeing in the UFC, I, I – had got to referee a lot of fights. Now, how long before you refereed, let's say, a main event in the UFC? I think they had been using me for a couple of years before I refereed a main event. I mean, one of my first uh, main events, I think, was, um, or, or a championship fight, was, uh, I think it was, you know, the one, the big one that, that was a big um, event for me is the one with Tim Sylvia and Frank Mir. With the arm break. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Interesting. Now, a, that was early on with me uh, getting a uh, getting championship fights and things like that. Sure. So at that point, you've been refereeing several years. You had many years, and you had a lot of experience. A- along the way, were any athletic commission members going to you and saying, "Hey, we really like this call," or "We don't understand another call you made"? To what extent do you get feedback for your calls from the various commission representatives? 
Well, uh, they, they, they give us uh, feedback. It's different with every commission. So uh, each, you know, you can say a commission, each commission is its own unique uh, uh, thing and they do things differently. Uh, so um, they, they, uh, they do give me feedback or they'll ask me why I made a call a certain way uh, and we'll talk about it. Um, and uh, mainly well, the feedback that I like the most where I, uh, is where I uh, interact with other officials, people who are going to make a decision, who are going to tell me something and who I'm going to have to watch do the same thing. I'm going to have, I get to watch them do what they tell me. It's because anytime, let's say, you know, you make a call and it's controversial. Uh, someone could point the finger either way, but when they're actually looking at that situation, uh, in that moment with the information that's given to them, they have to make a decision. They can't make that decision based on what happens one second later. And so it's, uh, so I like to talk to people who, uh, who are going to be in those same things, who I'm going to get to see do the same thing, you know? Herb Dean joins us here on the Luke Thomas Show. Is any of the evaluations, even if they're very positive, right? Let's say you did a killer job. Let's talk about that Tim Sylvia versus Frank Mir fight. I mean, you saved Tim Sylvia's arm from uh, you know, serious problems, right? It was an unbelievably good call. I didn't even notice it until um, the replay, and I don't think the commentators did either at the time. Did anything formal in terms of like a, a glowing write-up get written into – the records? Is there any kind of record keeping about some of the best calls you've made? I don't know what type of record keeping they do. Like I said, each commission is different. So uh, I don't know if they keep records on us. They may have records. They may have, each of them have their own uh, decision making on how they're going to bring referees up, who they're going to give things to, and who they're not going to give things to. Uh, I think that uh, one of the things that may go into it when they uh, give me an assignment or, or somebody who has a lot of experience then that's, you know, that's, that's them saying they've done everything they can to get the most experienced person, you know. Hmm. But there's, they don't list, like, a formal set of criteria. No, not that I know of. Not that you know uh, of. It might be a big, good thing. You know what? I think uh, a good thing for you to do is maybe you might want to chat with one of the commissioners. Yeah. Because that would, that, would, that would be, and when you do, when you are going to have him on the show, let me know. Cause I'll listen. Yeah, no, well, they're, they're not, you know, here's the thing about that, Herb. They're not that chatty these days. Oh, really? <laughs> not with media. The thing is, they'll talk a lot off the record, which is which is not, it's helpful, but it's not, mm -hmm. there's a lot of things you just can't say because it's all, well, off the record, and so it makes doing the job uh, a little bit more difficult. Um, if I had to ask well, you- I, I, I'm chatty for the reason, I think that, um, I think that people, I don't think it should be a mystery as to why- uh, we make our calls. Our calls affect people's careers. It affects people's health. And uh, uh, right or wrong, I um, I want to be able to tell people why I do what I do. Herb Dean joins us here on the Luke Thomas Show. Herb, if somebody asked you, how does a referee advance their career? And it's it's more than just working hard. What I mean is through performance. And the answer is, of course, do a good job. But I think it's probably a little more complicated than that. How would you explain to them how someone like you was able to advance through the ranks? Well, see, that's the thing. I don't know how to, how to do that. I don't know how to advance career. I don't. I mean, I see a lot of people uh, bringing uh, politics and strategies that they may have used in other industries over into refereeing as far as for advancement. Uh, first of all, so I don't look at it that way. I, I, I take a different approach. It's not like I have goals that, like, I want to referee this or I want to referee that. Uh, it's my sport that I love, and, and it's a, and some duties that I have that I love doing, but at the same time, they're sacred. So as far as whether I'm refereeing uh, amateur fights or whether I'm refereeing, you know, the main event that's being watched all around the world, it's still, I'm still happy to be doing what I'm doing. Gotcha. Uh, as far as for the, you know, the other stuff and all the television stuff, I guess there's some perks. I mean, people want to buy me beer and things like that, <laughs> but, um, you know, you can only drink so much beer, right? Yeah, well, that depends, Herb. I, I should, this, it depends how thirsty you are, I suppose. Someone in my case, I can have a lot. Uh, all right, so let's, let, let, me, let me ask you this way. I, I know John McCarthy has done a little bit in terms of boxing, refereeing. To what extent have you done some of that? I haven't done any boxing refereeing. None. Are you interested in I that? I did it. I know. I made a point. At one time I was, and I was asked about it. And at the time, and it's something that, we, that is not as big of an issue as it was, but at the time when the commissions first came over, there were a lot of boxing officials who wanted to officiate MMA. And I, uh, and I made it as a point to, uh, 
not referee boxing because even though I have experience in boxing, I used to train boxing, you know, uh, and, and I've, I've uh, competed kickboxing. Uh, I, I think that even though I understand the sports, there's a long list of people more qualified to referee it than me. Hmm. Does the associate? So why would I go get in, in that line? And why would and maybe if somebody might want to put me to the head of the line because they recognize my face from other things, I think I would be doing the fighters a disservice. So I definitely stayed away from it, hoping that people who did not have a history in our sport would stay away from ours. Uh, if a fighter, excuse me, if a referee like you says to themselves, you know, things are going great as a referee, I really enjoy it, but I want to get better. Does the commission lead on issues of referee training, or is it up to the referee themselves to seek out those kinds of services? Well, it depends. It's different commissions. So, like, you, we keep saying the commission, the commission. Right. There's 50 states, right? Each one of them is supposed to have their own uh, athletic commission. And there's, um, there's different, uh, all the different countries, each of them has their own commission. There's the ABC that's supposed to make suggestions. But each commission has their own way they do things. So some of them do. Some of them say, okay, some of, some of them it's mandatory and it's part of their uh, bylaws that there's training uh, once a year. Some of them have training twice a year. Hmm. Uh, some of them, before you're going to get licensed, they're going to need to know that you've gone through a, 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 AB, uh, a, a training course uh, that's been recognized depending on where you're uh, seeking to get a license. And thinking of, speaking of that, I will be doing my course this year. Anybody who's interested, HerbDean.com. Check it out. Go on there. Um, poke around. It's not that organized of a website, but uh, you can find something about referee school, and that way you can leave me a message, and I get back to you. Yeah, so if I had but, to ask um, you, you mean you teach this stuff. I had to ask you, how do you stay on top of you know current best practices in refereeing? What would you say? The best, the best thing for me is uh, – is experience and also the people that I have access to. So um, my, uh, I, I talk to John and, and Dan, and when we work, we talk about situations that come up. But also what's really awesome is I've been doing this referee course for years, and a lot of the guys work, and they're different all throughout the world. And uh, maybe they, uh, they, like some of them are, have, since I've been doing it for a while, some of them have risen through the ranks and are the go-to people for their area. Those guys are calling me all the time with situations and scenarios, and I'm always weeding those things out and thinking about what I'm going to put in my course and what I'm not. And another thing about that is I'm actually going to make that, I'm going to formalize that a little bit, and uh, I'm going to change up my website. And to stay current, uh, part of it is you're going to have to contribute to the body of knowledge. So it's, that's, that's, uh, that's what I'm constantly doing. But also, uh, because I'm uh, licensed to do some of these other uh, athletic commissions, the ones that it's mandatory that you seek out training or, that, or put on training courses, I show up. And, uh, and either if I'm not doing the training, if I'm not uh, you know, leading it, then I'm there participating. So I, that's how I uh, stay up to date. Before we let you go, Herb, would you be in favor of a national commission in MMA who would lead from the front on issues like this? Um, to be honest, I don't know. It depends on who that commission was and if they were good and if they were, um, you know, because the way we do this thing with a national, with a mandatory commission, that's the way the sport, uh, combat sports are, are run in the United States for certain reasons. You know, there's a big world out there and everybody's doing combat sports and not everybody has this, uh, same setup as we have here in the U S for better or for worse. You know, some of the things that the, the commissions do, uh, as far as for um, the health and safety practices of the fighter and making sure certain things are, are in place are amazing. And, they, and, and I'm sure that they, uh, there has been a lot of benefits to, uh, to the fighters for that. Uh, some of the things we had in the early days where uh, guys from uh, boxing with no experience and no desire to know anything about our sport were showing up and uh, – officiating and then holding out their hand saying, pay me. I, I think that was a disservice. So, you know what I mean? And there's things like the back and forth. So there's, there's a lot of things that, um, that, that definitely the commission has done to, uh, to bring our sport to where it is. You know what I mean? Uh, but some of the things, so uh, I don't know if I would be at a, at the head of a, na uh, in favor of a national commission because it depends on how it was going to be organized. Fair enough. Uh, last thing on this, Herb, are you at all an NFL football fan? I mean, I, I watched the Super Bowl. 
but you know, I, I mean, I, I, well, the thing is, here's the thing: is I, I like football. If I'm, if I'm somewhere where it's on, I, I'll watch it. But I don't watch TV. I just got a TV in my house, uh, maybe a year or two ago. Fair enough. And that, and that, and that wasn't at my own insistence. I just, it's just not something I'd like to do. I like to do. I like to go and train martial arts. Or I like to go for a run. I like to play my guitar. I like to read books for downtime. So I just never really had a TV in my in my house. There's, I, I have this argument. I don't know how real it is, but there are 32 teams in the NFL, and people say the hardest thing to do in sports is hit 300 in Major League Baseball. But I would argue, if we're talking positions, it's to be a quarterback because while there's 32 teams, there's maybe 15 good uh, quarterbacks, and the rest of them are not all that awesome. And I've seen some people say, "Oh, this referee's not that great," or "That referee's not that great." And I say to myself, just reminds me of the quarterback issue. Yeah, there might be some issues with the guy, but this is how hard that job is to do that 15 of them are as as much or 20, whatever it is, is as much as we can put together because it's just so difficult to find someone who can play the levels. Do you think that's a fair comparison or not? Well, I I think a quarterback, those guys spend a lot of time. uh, I don't know if I would compare it to a quarterback because I think those guys, man, those guys have a really hard job. But uh, I um, I do think that our job is 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 harder than some people would think it is. Uh, I think that a lot of people in our sport do recognize that it's a difficult job, and you know, are, uh, a lot of people who watch the sport they put themselves in that place, and that's why uh, I think that you know our our position gets so much scrutiny because people realize how important it is. But yeah, it's it's a it's a it's a you know, it's some of the situations aren't that hard, and they're you know you're just there. But then when you're faced with one with a difficult situation, there's it's especially like in boxing. There's no or kickboxing. There's no counts. You're going to make your decision when you make it. Uh, even the decision to turn the corner and get some more uh, information. Uh, you know that decision when you make that decision, you know that guy's going to eat two more punches while you're deciding to turn that corner, and he may be unconscious. While so there's a lot of a lot of split second decisions that you have to make. Are we going to see you at UFC Austin? Uh, yes, you will. I'll be there. Very good. Herb, thank you so much for your time and insight today. Look forward to seeing you back in the octagon. Thank you so much. Okay. Uh, thank you for having me on. No problem. And oh, ah. Here, so anybody who wants to uh, go uh, find out about MMA officiating, go to HerbDean.com. HerbDean.com. There it is. Thank you, Herb. Okay. Thank you. Bye. Bye. There he goes. All right.